This morning on CBS 2 News, the SCOTUS decision on Roe v. Wade made waves over the weekend. A look at the response from across the country and here in Idaho. Plus, the Supreme Court expected to pass down more decisions this week. What to know regarding the controversial Remain in Mexico policy? Plus, today marks the start to Idaho's float season. Some tips to keep things floating as smooth as possible. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. A live look for you of downtown Boise on this Monday, June 27th, 2022. And things, they're really heating up. Our first shot at triple digit temperatures kicks off today. We bring in Luke Randall, just how hot it's going to get. Mild right now, though, as we kick off our morning. But yeah, it's only going to heat up. Yeah, unfortunately, it is going to get very hot today. You see 67 right now, breezy, quite nice, but it is going to heat up so much later today. We'll talk about that in a bit. Right now, as you can see, nothing really coming over the radar, just some clouds moving in, but it's basically going to be sunny all day long here. And as you can see, just some clouds moving in and out, mostly going to be sun though. All right, we take a quick look at our adventure cast for today though, and here's where you can see the temperatures 77 by 9 a.m. 92 by noon and 101 by 6 p.m. 103 is the projected temperature in Ontario and Eagle. It is going to be so tremendously hot. We're going to talk about why that is and how long that's going to last. And um, unfortunately, it's going to be a while. All right, thank you, Luke. Yeah, may be wanting to head to the river today. Some good news on that coming up. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Here's a live look out there this morning. Everything running smoothly on this Monday morning. Hope you all are having a good start. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And a reminder, as you're heading out the door this morning, drivers on I-84 out in Caldwell should expect ramp closures and traffic changes for the next six weeks. Now, the eastbound off-ramp and the westbound on-ramp at Franklin Road will be closed. Detours will take drivers down 21st Avenue to Blaine Street, then over to the 10th Avenue interchange. Linden Street will also be closed under I-84 as, as crews are finishing up construction. Now, as Idaho grows, so does the need for more expanded roadways. This is all part of the biggest ongoing project here in the valley to widen I-84 out in Canyon County. Well, it has been one month from today that Michael Vaughn will be missing for a full year. Now, Vaughn was just five when he disappeared from his Fruitland neighborhood on the evening of July 27th. This past week, the community gathered to celebrate his sixth birthday and to raise awareness about the ongoing search. Anyone with information about Michael, they're asked to email fruitland.org or call 208-343-COPS. And you are looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Supreme Court's latest decision to overturn Roe v. Wade is causing waves across the country. Now, coast to coast, protesters, they rallied over the weekend for and against the Supreme Court's decision. Now, at least 13 states, including right here in Idaho, do have Texas-style trigger laws that locked new abortion restrictions into place following Roe v. Wade being overturned. Now, that law was signed into um, law by uh, Governor Brad Little. It'll go into effect later this summer. Now, another 13 are likely to restrict access or enact bans very soon. Women are not second-class citizens, and the government is not the one that will decide about the continuation of a pregnancy. You know, there's no equivalent there for men. What the Supreme Court said was that the Constitution does not give a woman the right to have an abortion. In the meantime, protesters in Idaho also made their way to the state capitol following the Supreme Court decision. Crowds, they marched from Boise City Hall to the Idaho capitol to make their voices heard. Now, most of the people there were in support of abortion rights. Some counter protesters were in there. Both sides did remain peaceful. A larger protest followed on Saturday. You're looking at it now brought thousands to the steps of the Idaho Capitol. Well, several Idaho Republican leaders are praising the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, stating that it'll allow them to protect unborn lives. Governor Brad Little released this statement, saying in part, quote, the right to an abortion was a judicial creation. Abortion is not a right expressed in the U.S. Constitution, and abortion will be entrusted to the states and the people 
to regulate, end quote. In the meantime, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean released a statement. It reads, quote, the decision to terminate a pregnancy is a deeply personal and private one. This decision by the Supreme Court will have devastating consequences on the health, privacy, and economic independence of women throughout our community, state, and nation. To read the full statement, as well as statements from other Idaho leaders, you can head to Idaho News. Com. Well, there are still a handful of decisions that we are still expecting from the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, one of those has to do with the controversial immigration policy started by President Trump that President Biden has sought to undo, though he's been met with some resistance by courts. Now, national correspondent Christine Frazau brings us up to speed on the case, looking at what's known as the Remain in Mexico policy. The central question in the case Biden v. Texas whether the Biden administration must continue to enforce the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. Do you believe that the remain in Mexico policy instituted by the Trump administration is cruel? Uh, as it was implemented, I do. Twice, President Biden has tried to end the policy, also called migrant protection protocols, which requires those seeking asylum to wait for their cases to play out in Mexico or else be detained here but he was sued by the states of Missouri and Texas. It's pretty important that that be enforced and that people be required by law, which they are, to remain in their country of origin before their hearing. The reality, the majority of those seeking asylum are allowed to now wait in this country with only enough detention beds for about 30 to 40,000 people. Just last month, more than 239,000 people were encountered at the border. The head of one sector in Texas tweeting Friday his team seized 46 pounds of cocaine, encountered more than 1,300 migrants, including three sex offenders and a member of MS-13. Some border officials sounding alarm bells following shocking new numbers from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, reporting it's already arrested 50 people on the terror watch list between ports of entry, a massive jump from previous years, 15 in 2021, and single digits in recent years before that. Why are they coming? Because our borders are insecure and, and they're wide open. Mark Morgan used to head U.S. Customs and Border Protection under President Trump. Who's getting away? We call those gotaways. Those, those that have broken in our southwest border and evaded apprehension. Right now under this administration, 800,000 have gotten away. My concern is the next terrorist attack could already be here. Unlike last week's rulings on a New York gun law and federal abortion law, the nine justices' questions in this case were far less revealing regarding which way they may rule. In the past, they've deferred to the executive branch to enforce immigration law. But we should know much more in a matter of hours or at least by the end of the week. I'm Christine Frizzau reporting. Well, back here on the Treasure Valley, some sad news to report. The Caldwell Fire Department mourning the sudden death of one of their own. Now, Chief Deputy Chief Brad Johnson Trosky had a medical emergency while at his home over the weekend. And despite best efforts of first responders and doctors at West Valley Medical Center, he did pass away. Now, Johnson was an accomplished trainer. He worked with both veterans and new recruits and was known throughout the Gem State. Well, switching gears, float season on the Boise River, it begins today. Ada County Parks and Waterways, now they do suggest you leave your car at Ann Morrison Park where your float will end and take the shuttle bus to Barber Park where your float will begin. Well, at Barber Park, you can rent all the equipment you'll need for an enjoyable and cooling float down the Boise River. And keep in mind, you can also um, rent floating devices while you're going down the river or bring your own. And of course, no alcohol or glass is ever allowed on the river. You always want to pack in and pack out. That is the rule of the game. And Luke, I know you're from the Maryland, Virginia area. Are you guys floaters? Have you ever floated before? I've floated before, but it does sound like a lot of people are really excited to go out there, especially because it is so hot right now. Yes, it, it is going to get very hot today. First day of triple digits of the year. <laughs> Ready to go. It's unbelievably <laughs> hot right now. There are some headlines that we need to talk about. First, dangerously, dangerously hot weather. It is going to be scorching hot today throughout the Treasure Valley. Even in the mountains, it's going to get up to 90 degrees. Now, we have this dry weather and it is just so important to hydrate. I know going out and when you're floating, even having water with you, that's just important because of just how dry it's going to be. It's going to suck the moisture right out of you. Now, in the midweek, we do get some relief, but by relief, I mean like high 80s, low 90s, it is still going to be dangerously hot. Look at these high temperatures for today. 104 in Harper, 104 in Ontario now actually, 
103 in Caldwell, Stanley 84 still hot, 89 in McCall, 102 in Boise. It is just, it's kind of miserable if you don't like hot weather. So you can see some satellite and radar. There are chances of a few thunderstorms and showers, not major, but there could be something just because of how much heat there is just moving through the region. Take a look wider. You can see that storm developing out on the Pacific Northwest. It's probably not going to hit us. So let's take a look right now. This ridge of high pressure that's coming right through, as you can see, it's moving right through Boise and that hot weather is going to stay, but it's going to move out over the next week. But see, we're still getting all this warm weather. These low pressure systems are moving up and hopefully, hopefully this one develops here and can finally cool us down within a week or so. Thank you so much, Luke. Yeah, it is going to be a toasty one out there. It is your Monday, 5, 10 a.m. Everything's still very mild, though, for this morning. Just be ready for that heat up. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI, we do bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is looking good this morning, so smooth sailing on this Monday. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 a.m. or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, hearings continue today about the police response into the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. A look at some of the backlash. Plus, firework stands opening for the 4th of July celebrations later this week. The reminder from fire officials to stay safe. And it is our time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. 48% of people say they have to have this when grilling out. Lots of options. Stomach already grumbling and the answer, watermelon. Great thing to cool off possibly with today. Now for today's question, 41% of people say this brings them joy and relaxes them. All right, folks, what do we think it is? Well, if you are trying to avoid the heat, Sun Valley isn't a terrible option. As you can see, 85 is the high there today. Still very hot for there, but not nearly as hot as the Treasure Valley. 54 tonight in Sun Valley and 84 tomorrow. Then moving over into Ontario, 103 today, 66 in the evening, and then 100 again tomorrow in Ontario. Won't be nearly as hot in Boise, but still, wow, Ontario is going to be... Thank you, Luke. 515 on your Monday. Now hearings into the police response in Uvalde, the Uvalde school shooting. They resume as of today. Now over the weekend, the final funeral was held for the 21st victim of those 21 who were shot and killed. 10 year old Luzia Garcia was remembered for his contagious laugh and for his love of trampolines. Now a mom in Uvalde, Texas did manage to get her kids out of last month's school shooting despite efforts from police to keep her out. Now Chelsea Torres shares her story and why she says she's still getting pushback from police. They take me off the cuff, I see his arm like, just give me a little gateway, cause I'm a little, so a little gateway where I can just run. Without a doubt in her mind, Angelina Gomez knew she would have to save her children herself. She jumped a fence, began banging on a nearby door where her oldest son's teacher saw her. I'm like you already have a gateway out, so just, might as well come out. Like if I'm gonna run out with him, y'all just come on too. Gomez safely gets her oldest son and some of his classmates out, then goes back for her youngest son, running around the school, desperately searching for his classroom. At this moment, I'm jiggling the handle and I'm going pretty nuts, like trying to get the door open and it's not gonna open. So I stand back and the cops are already on me and they're like, ma'am, calm down. Like she tells them to evacuate the school or she won't move. Immediately they start evacuating that classroom and my son runs out to me. He's like, mom, mom, just remember, when my son saw my other son, he hu one hugged the other one and said, I'm so glad you're okay. And the other one said, I was so worried that you weren't. So it was a big thing because in that moment, I was like, they're really happy to see each other. They got that they're each other, that they're alive. Since May 24th, Gomez claims she's been faced with scrutiny from law enforcement at her own home. The other night we were exercising and we had a cop parked at the corner flickering us with his headlights. Due to incidents like this, Gomez said she is separated from her boys. Just so my sons don't feel like they have to watch cops passing by, stopping, parking. She has been protesting along with other community members in Uvalde Town Square, asking for UCISD Police Chief Pete Arredondo to be fired. Her goal now is to file a lawsuit. The fact that he wasn't fired immediately 
based upon whatever it is, hours of video, from testimony such as from Angeli, is an indication that there is some sort of a, what, corruption? Switching gears and looking ahead to 4th of July weekend from Boise Fire, a reminder to be safe with fireworks. Now you've seen the fireworks stands now open. If you buy, just remember that fireworks are not allowed in our foothills or open grasslands. We do have a link to a map showing you precise areas. If you are going to be lighting off fireworks, check it out. It is on IdahoNews.com. Or perhaps you'd like to save a little cash and watch professionals set off fireworks. The fireworks show at Ann Morrison Park. It starts at dusk on the 4th of July. Just a note that the park will be close to cars, so you'll have to leave your car elsewhere or bike in, walk in, no matter what. You also are asked to leave at home any drones, pets, and any fireworks you may have that does include sparklers. Yeah, always love to be able to watch Ann Morrison's fireworks. We're, we live close to the bench, so it's oh, nice to be able nice. to be close enough. But so many people making their way down there, excited for 4th of July to finally kick off. It's crazy that it's already the, uh, yeah, we're heading down it to the fourth. has been a ridiculously <laughs> fast year. I'm sure many people are going to go out there, enjoy it. I always like like going to a fireworks show because I'm always like nervous of like getting them, setting them off, just like the accidents. <laughs> so it's good to have professionals just to like leave it to the professionals. Honestly, for, definitely. Well, the one thing I'm going to leave to the professionals at least is the temperatures for today and our forecast because it is going to heat up, especially if you're going to be in Eastern Oregon or the Lower Treasure Valley. Yeah, it is going to be just so hot and dry throughout the rest of the Treasure Valley right now. 67 degrees, thankfully not nearly as hot as it's going to get today. A little bit breezy. It's quite nice out right now. And as you can see with our future cast, no real precipitation. There could be something late in the afternoon, maybe a shower or thunderstorm here and there. But as you can see, just some clouds moving in and out. It's going to be sunny almost all day long. Now taking a look at the radar a little bit further and then into our extended forecast. As you can see, 101 today here in the Treasure Valley, then 96 on Tuesday, 86 on Wednesday, 90 on Thursday, 93 again Friday, and then 96 Saturday, 92 Sunday. So you see that high pressure system moving in. It's going to weaken a little bit as you get that cool down Wednesday and Thursday, but it is still going to remain just so blazing hot. And as you move into the mountains for a little relief, well, you get a little bit, but it's still going to be quite warm. Monday and Tuesday, 89 and 83 before finally cooling down a little bit to 75, then up to 78, 82, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, Sunday, 84 and 80. So just scorching temperatures throughout the Treasure Valley and very warm temperatures in the mountains. This dry weather makes hydration and just taking care of yourself so important because of just how dangerous it is to be out there. If you're going hiking, make sure you go with a group of friends. Just be careful because of how dangerous it is right now. Yeah, definitely. If you're going to be outside, maybe in the early morning, later hours. Thank you so much, Luke. 520 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything is running smoothly this morning on our main roads, even secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBY. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, struggling with losing loved ones to COVID, the impact the virus still having on COVID survivors. And later, the I-84 expansion project may be shaking up your commute for a few weeks, where drivers will need to steer clear of. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 524 on your Monday. Welcome back with more than a million Americans now lost to COVID-19. Ripple effects of grief are spreading through the nation. As the toll rises, so do the number of bereaved family members. Now, Elise Preston speaks with a New Yorker grappling with the devastating loss, both at home and at work. For Eileen Jimenez, the past two years have brought heartbreak after heartbreak. They were like one after the other. You know what I mean? Like you don't even have a break to kind of grieve one before you're grieving the next. COVID-19 took two of her uncles and four of her close friends. I lost a very good college friend that I 
known for many years, and I just couldn't believe it, right? She just had a baby like two years ago. The pandemic also left gaping holes in her work at Catholic Guardian Services, where she helps find permanent homes for children in foster care. Eight of the foster mothers she works with died of COVID, leaving behind the children in their care. My heart broke for them, and particularly one that was being adopted, and that was completely disrupted. More than a million Americans have now died of COVID-19. Research at Penn State University shows for each of those deaths, at least nine family members are left behind as survivors. Our results would imply that um, with over a million uh, individuals who died of COVID-19, that um, over nine million people had lost um, a parent, uh, sibling, spouse, child, or grandparent in the U.S. Ashton Verdery helped to lead the study. I think that it's going to be 50 or 60 years before um, a large proportion of the population doesn't remember that their grandparent um, passed away in this uh, kind of uh, you know, acute mortality shock that, that influenced the country. Ripples of grief that will change American families long after the pandemic loosens its grip. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Well, a new study shows an increased prevalence of headaches in adolescents during the pandemic. The report presented at the European Academy of Neurology, they analyzed 851 adolescents. They found that about one third of school children acknowledged prolonged exposure time to computer screens. Researchers say a lack of suitable conditions for online learning from home may be to blame, as well as school exams and anxiety about coronavirus contributing to those worsening headache symptoms or triggering new onset headaches. Well, still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, a sudden death at the Caldwell Fire Department has the community mourning this morning. Remembering Deputy Chief Brad Johnson Trosky. And here's a look at what's coming up tonight on CBS 2. At 7 o'clock, we have The Neighborhood. At 7.30, Bob Hart's Abishola. At 8 o'clock, NCIS. Then at 9, NCIS Hawaii. And then join Brent Hunsaker, Janae Ryan, and Roland Stedham for CBS 2 News at 10 o'clock. And don't forget about our question of the day. 41% of people say this brings them joy and relaxes them. All right, folks, what is it? We'll read some of your guesses coming up next. This morning on CBS 2 News, the SCOTUS decision on Roe v. Wade making waves over the weekend. A look at the response from across the country and here in Idaho. Plus, the Supreme Court expected to pass down more decisions this week. What to know regarding the controversial Remain in Mexico policy. Plus, today marks the start to Idaho's float season. Some tips to keep things floating as smooth as possible. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning, I'm Luke Randall. I hope everyone's doing well. Right now in Boise, 67 degrees, a light breeze but it is not going to stay that way. We'll talk about that in a bit. Here, take a look at your future cast. As you can see, just some clouds moving over the Treasure Valley. It's gonna be mostly sunny throughout the most of the day. There is a chance of thunderstorms and showers tonight, but it's quite low and it's gonna get lower and lower as the day progresses. So let's take a quick look at your adventure cast and then we'll talk about main weather in a bit. But looking at your adventure cast right now, you can see 77 degrees by 9 a.m but then 92 degrees by noon, no joke. Then 101 by six, that's not fake unfortunately, it's gonna be triple digits in Boise today and actually 103 in Ontario and Eagle. It is gonna be dangerously hot today, so make sure you're staying careful. And hey, it's float season, so you might wanna get out there and cool off because it's gonna be very, very warm. Thank you, Luke. It is 531 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Live look out there with a little peak of first light to kick off your Monday morning. Everything running smoothly out there, both on our main and secondary roads. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBY. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And a reminder, as you're heading out the door this morning, drivers on I-84 in Caldwell expect ramp closure and traffic changes for the next six weeks. Now the eastbound off ramp and the westbound on ramp at Franklin Road will be closed. Detours will take drivers down 21st Street to Blaine Street and then over to the 10th Avenue interchange. Linden Street will also be closed under I-84 as crews are finishing up construction. As Idaho grows, so does the need for more expanded roadways. 
This is all part of the biggest ongoing project in the valley to widen I-84 in Canyon County. And one month from today, Michael Vaughn will be missing for a full year. Vaughn was just five years old when he disappeared from his Fruitland neighborhood on the evening of July 27th. This past week, the community gathered to celebrate his sixth birthday and to raise awareness about the ongoing search. Now, anyone with information about Michael is asked to email fruitland.org or to call 208-343-COPS. You're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Supreme Court's latest decision to overturn Roe v. Wade is causing waves across the country. Coast to coast, protesters rallied over the weekend for and against the Supreme Court's decision. At least 13 states, including here in Idaho, have Texas-style trigger laws. That locks abortion or new restrictions into place after Roe v. Wade was overturned. That law was signed by Idaho Governor Brad Little and will go into effect later this summer. Another 13 are likely to restrict access or enact bans soon. Women are not second-class citizens, and the government is not the one that will decide about the continuation of a pregnancy. You know, there's no equivalent there for men. What the Supreme Court said was that the Constitution does not give a woman the right to have an abortion. Meanwhile, here at home, protesters in Idaho also made their way to the state capitol following the Supreme Court decision. Crowds, they marched from Boise City Hall to Idaho Capitol to make their voices heard about the U.S. Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade. Now, most of the people there were in support of abortion rights. Some counter protests were there. Both sides did remain peaceful. A larger protest followed on Saturday, bringing thousands to the steps of the Idaho Capitol. And several Idaho Republican leaders are praising the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, stating that it will allow them to protect unborn lives. Now, Governor Brad Little released a statement saying in part that, quote, the right to an abortion was a judicial creation. Abortion is not a right expressed in the U.S. Constitution, and abortion will be entrusted to the states and their people to regulate, end quote. In the meantime, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean released this statement. It reads, quote, the decision to terminate a pregnancy is a deeply personal and private one. This decision by the Supreme Court will have devastating consequences on the health, privacy and economic independence of women throughout our community, state and nation. To read the full statement, as well as statements from other Idaho leaders, you can head on over to IdahoNews.com. And there are still a handful of decisions we're expected to hear this week from the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, one of those has to do with the controversial immigration policy started by former President Trump that President Biden has now sought to undo, though he's been met with some resistance from courts. Now, national correspondent Christine Frizzau brings us up to speed on the case and looking at what we know as far as the remain in Mexico policy. The central question in the case Biden v. Texas, whether the Biden administration must continue to enforce the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. Do you believe that the remain in Mexico policy instituted by the Trump administration is cruel? Uh, as it was implemented, I do. Twice, President Biden has tried to end the policy, also called migrant protection protocols, which requires those seeking asylum to wait for their cases to play out in Mexico or else be detained here but he was sued by the states of Missouri and Texas. It's pretty important that that be enforced and that people be required by law, which they are, to remain in their country of origin before their hearing. The reality, the majority of those seeking asylum are allowed to now wait in this country with only enough detention beds for about 30 to 40,000 people. Just last month, more than 239,000 people were encountered at the border. The head of one sector in Texas tweeting Friday his team seized 46 pounds of cocaine, encountered more than 1,300 migrants, including three sex offenders and a member of MS-13. Some border officials sounding alarm bells following shocking new numbers from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, reporting it's already arrested 50 people on the terror watch list between ports of entry, a massive jump from previous years. 15 in 2021, and single digits in recent years before that. Why are they coming? Because our borders are insecure and, and they're wide open. Mark Morgan used to head U.S. Customs and Border Protection under President Trump. Who's getting away? We call those gotaways. Those, those that have broken in our southwest border and evaded apprehension. Right now under this administration, 800,000 have gotten away. 
My concern is the next terrorist attack could already be here. Unlike last week's rulings on a New York gun law and federal abortion law, the nine justices' questions in this case were far less revealing regarding which way they may rule. In the past, they've deferred to the executive branch to enforce immigration law. But we should know much more in a matter of hours or at least by the end of the week. I'm Christine Frizzell reporting. Back here on the Treasure Valley this morning, some sad news to report. The Caldwell Fire Department mourning the sudden death of one of their own. Now, Deputy Chief Brad Johnson Trosky had a medical emergency at home over the weekend. And despite best efforts from first responders and doctors at West Valley Medical Center, he did pass away. Now, Johnson was an accomplished trainer. He worked with both veterans and new recruits in the department and was known throughout the GEM state. Well, switching gears today, float season starts on the Boise River. Now, Ada County Parks and Waterways, they do suggest that you leave your car at Ann Morrison Park, where your float will end, and take the bus up to Barber Park, where your float will begin. Now, at Barber Park, you can rent all the equipment you'll need for an enjoyable and cooling float down the Boise River. Yeah, and definitely cooling sounds good today because it is going to be hot. First triple digits of the year, but at least it's still cool out this morning. So if you do want to get out and take your dog for a walk, best chance, Luke, again, early morning, late at night, but at least during, well, we have our sun in the sky. It is going to be toasty. Yeah, especially if you're thinking about your dog, you really want to consider the pavement. If you're going to walk on tarmac, it could be really I mean, the tarmac's a lot hotter than it actually mm -hmm. is, so your dog's going to burn your paws, even if it's like 70 or 80, so just be careful. Make sure that you take care of your dog. Walk on grass if possible. So let's talk about the headlines for this week. Dangerously hot. That mainly applies to, the, to today, but it's still going to be hot all week long with temperatures in the 90s every single day this week except Wednesday. It's going to be dry. You're going to need to hydrate. You're going to need to just take care of yourself. And then midweek relief. That's what I was talking about Wednesday. It's going to be a little bit cooler and it's not going to last, unfortunately. So we take a look at our high temperatures for today. 103 in Caldwell, 104 in Ontario, 102 in Boise now, 101 in Mountain Home, even McCall almost up to 90 degrees. So what's causing this? Well, this wave of high pressure is moving in. And as you can see, right off the coast, there's another storm and it might cool us down, but not for a while. You can see this ridge of high pressure is just what's causing everything. It's moving in and it's very, very, very hot. And as you can see, these low pressure systems, they've been missing us. So hopefully within the next week, this low pressure system will hit us and generate some storms and some rainfall that's that one appearing right here. This is Saturday, so it's going to be a while before we actually might get some relief and hopefully Sunday or Monday next week, we should have some good news to report with some cooler weather. Thank you, Luke. It is 540 AM on your Monday. CBS 2 News and Newstalk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything looking good out there this morning. Keep in mind, though, out in Caldwell at I-84, we do have Franklin Road eastbound and westbound closed on down. We'll talk more about that coming up in the next few minutes. But when you do get in the car, just make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And don't forget, it's time for our question of the day. The question is 41% of people say this brings them joy and relaxes them. All right, first thing I could think of was the sound of rain. One of my favorite things on a tin, I grew up with a tin roof, so it's one of my favorite sounds in the world. Um, possibly, you know, those meditation apps. I use Calm a lot. Yeah, Shout that's out a to good Calm. One. That's a good one. What about I you, guess, Luke? Like maybe walking through the woods. That's always fun, just going on hikes and stuff. It's just simple. Oh, yeah. Really relaxing. Um, Who doesn't love joy. nature? Hmm. Yeah, all of those Dogs, things. Pets. Pets, yeah, petting your dog, possibly mm -hmm. even too, or a cat. We don't discriminate here. We love <laughs> all animals here at CBS2. Doug says sunshine. Yeah, that's actually one of my favorite things to do. Just go outside. Put It'll your be face sunny all week long. It'll just be super duper hot. <laughs> <laughs> my inner spirit animal is a seal. All right, Anita says reading a book. It's a nice way to calm down. I do that at the end of the day, a nice little nightcap in that way. I need to way. read more books. That's a good one, though. That's but a really a good, good one. good guess. Let's see what else we have. Yep, Lita yep. says their pet. Yeah, nothing better than some of those puppy cuddles helping melt away any stress or worry. Now, if you think you know the answer, you still have lots of time, about an hour and 15 minutes. You can guess both on our Facebook page or Twitter. We'll read some of your guesses throughout the morning and reveal the answer at the end of the show right before CBS This Morning. 
And still to come on CBS2 News, Russia continues its assault on Ukraine, where we're suddenly striking that's catching the country off guard. Well, if you're looking to avoid this hot weather, Sun Valley is a little bit of a good option. It's still 85 and then it'll be 54 tonight and then 84 tomorrow. But hey, it's a little bit cooler than the Treasure Valley and going up into Oregon. You can just see how hot it's going to get. Ontario, the hottest of anything that we've seen. 103 today, extremely hot tonight, 66 degrees, still warm. And then tomorrow, Ontario will be the only place in the Treasure Valley to reach triple digits again with a temperature of 100. Thank you, Luke. We're now turning to Russia and its intensifying attacks on Ukraine. Renewed bombing of the capital city of Kyiv this morning. Russia's Ministry of Defense says dozens of missiles are being fired this morning. CBS's Remy Inconcio reports from the capital. For the first time in nearly three weeks, Russian missiles hit the capital, Kyiv. One person was killed and at least six injured, including this seven-year-old girl pulled from the rubble. Thankfully alive, her father tragically was not. That missile hit the roof of their apartment complex, but it's actually not the first time that it's been hit. The last time was about two months ago. Now, one possibility is that Russian forces are targeting a Soviet-era arms factory. That's literally this one across the street. It's maybe symbolic, uh, symbolic aggression. Uh, Kyiv Mayor yeah. Vitaly Klitschko said it's maybe a symbolic attack ahead of NATO's summit in Madrid this week, where the war in Ukraine is set to dominate the agenda. But Russian targets were also hit today, shattered military trucks and other equipment on fire. These are believed to be the first targets destroyed by U.S.-supplied guided rocket systems that arrived in Ukraine just days ago. Too late to save the eastern city of Severodonetsk. Ukrainian troops there have been ordered to retreat. Russian forces are now trying to take its sister city of Lizitansk. And if that city falls, and it is expected to, then that would mean the entire region of Luhansk will have fallen to Russian forces. That would be a territorial loss and a hit to morale for Ukraine. But President Vladimir Zelensky says that every city that's been taken will be won back. Ramy Innocencio, CBS News, Kyiv. In the meantime, Russia's renewed attack, it coincides with a three-day summit in the Bavarian Alps. Now, President Joe Biden and Western allies are focused on keeping economic fallout from the war in Ukraine from fracturing the global coalition working to punish Russia's aggression. Now, Britain's Boris Johnson warned the leaders not to give in to fatigue, even as Russia lobbed new missiles at Kyiv. Well, we do know it is a tough time for families across the globe and here in Idaho. There is an opportunity for you to help hungry Idahoans in need this week. Now, CBS2 is hosting our summer food drive. It's this Wednesday, the 29th, right here at CBS2 News. Now, donations will go to the Idaho Food Bank. You can drop off donations anytime between 5 a.m. to 6 p.m. Come by and say hi. Yep, any non-perishable food items, come on down again. It will be Wednesday. And I know that many people, at least while we are preparing for our food drive, many people this morning at least preparing for these triple-digit temperatures <laughs> as they're heading out. Especially. Probably good to get food right now because you don't want to go outside this afternoon with how hot it's going to get. So let's take a quick look at our headlines. Or actually right now in Boise, 67 degrees, uh, light breeze going through. And that's it's quite nice now, but it is going to get so, so hot today. Take a look at our future cast. You can see nothing really coming over the Treasure Valley, just a few clouds. Now, there is a chance of thunderstorms today, but it's very light. There could be a shower, but that chance is going to diminish as the day goes on. You just see some clouds coming through, but it's mostly going to be sunny all day long here. Now, we go to our extended forecast. This is where you can just see how absurdly hot it's going to be this next week. 101 today in Boise, then 96 degrees tomorrow. And that midweek relief I mentioned, that's where you can see it on Wednesday, 86 degrees and 90 on Thursday. I mean, that's still hot though, you have to be real. 93 on Friday, 96 on Saturday and 92 on Sunday. So if you wanna get up into the mountains to avoid it, well, you're still gonna be quite hot. 89 on Monday, 80 three on Tuesday, then you get 75 and 78 on Wednesday and Thursday. That's pretty bearable, but then 82 on Friday, 
84 Saturday and 80 Sunday. So yeah, as Sarah mentioned, float season started today on the Boise River. Honestly, it's not a bad idea to go out there and get floating. Just get in the water, do something to cool off because these temperatures will not stop for the next week. It's going to be warm, sunny and dry. Oh, thank you, Luke. Yeah, if not in the river, make sure your air conditioning is ready to go. It is 550 on your Monday, folks. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Everything moving smoothly out there. When you do eventually get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBY. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, summer travel is heating up. Why the demand to get away is getting tough to keep up with despite higher price tags. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 553 on your Monday. Welcome back. Investors are hoping that markets will remain in recovery mode today. The S&P, they gained more than 6% last week. The Dow rose more than 5%. Now, it's a good sign compared to earlier this month. A big market sell-off brought the S&P into bear market territory. You'll remember, Wall Street is hoping the Fed might slow down its interest rate hikes aimed at reducing inflation. Well, national sky-high gas prices have eased just a bit this morning. A gallon of regular now averaging about 490. Still, pump prices are the highest they're here out here in the West. CBS's Dania Backus is in Los Angeles with the holiday rush already underway. Travelers are crowding airports and packing planes. 2.4 million passengers went through TSA checkpoints Friday. That's the highest number in a single day since the start of the pandemic. There were a lot more travelers at 4.30 in the morning than I expected. The stress is expected to get worse this 4th of July weekend. Airlines are short employees in and out of the cockpit. Pilots flying for United have a tentative deal for a 15% raise. But the cost of a getaway for the rest of us is soaring. Tickets to fly are 14% higher this year. Was it more expensive than usual to get Absolutely. to LA? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I have never, and I have traveled for years and years and years. I have never seen prices like this. Looking to sleep? A hotel will cost 23% more. If there's a rental car available, expect to pay about $40 a day more than 2019. After Yellowstone's historic flooding, the park's partially reopened roads had visitors waiting in traffic to witness iconic scenes like this, a bison roaming in front of tourists as Old Faithful erupts. No luck to visitors at Glacier National Park. The scenic going to the Sun Road usually reopens July 4th, but snow will keep it closed. Holiday traffic is expected to be the worst this Thursday and Friday between noon and 9 p.m. So if you want to avoid the gridlock, experts say make sure you leave early in the morning. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. In the meantime, here in Idaho, gas prices, they remain high this morning. AAA reporting our average sitting at 520 a gallon. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up, that will be Costco or Walmart. It lists several locations sitting at 509 a gallon. The buyout battle over Spirit Airlines is heating up ahead of a crucial shareholder vote set for this Thursday. Frontier Airlines added $2 in cash for each Spirit share to its bid. The cash and stock offer also include just two Frontier shares for every Spirit share. Now, the discount carrier said its board thinks Frontier's sweetened offer is better than the rival all-cash bid from JetBlue Airways. Still to come on CBS 2 this morning, the I-84 expansion project may be shaking up your commute for a few weeks where drivers will need to steer clear up. Plus, a sudden death at the Caldwell Fire Department has the community in mourning, remembering Deputy Chief Brad Johnson Trosky. Now you're watching CBS 2 News this morning. Your local weather and news continue all day on IdahoNews.com. We'll see you at the top of the hour with all of your headlines. Take the news with you on the radio, 670 KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.
This morning on CBS 2 News, the SCOTUS decision on Roe v. Wade making waves over the weekend. A look at the response from across the country and here in Idaho. Plus, the Supreme Court expected to hand down more decisions this week. What to know regarding the controversial Remain in Mexico policy. Plus, today marking the start to Idaho's float season. Some tips to keep things floating as smooth as possible. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning and thank you for joining us. A live look from downtown Boise on this Monday, June 27th, 2022. Yeah, a very mild start to your morning, but we're expecting the first triple digit days of the year to kick off well, a little bit later today. Let's bring in Luke Randall for a look at what to expect. Luke. <sighs> Thanks, Sarah. It is mild right now, but oh geez, it is going to get so much warmer. You see right now in Boise, 66 degrees with a light breeze coming through, feeling quite nice right now. And as you can see with our future cast, it's going to be sunny all day long, all week long. Actually, you can just see some light clouds moving in and out of the area, but it's still going to be mostly sunny all day long. There is a slight chance of thunderstorms, something the National Weather Service noted could be something earlier today, maybe a lightning strike potentially, but that is a very, very low, about 10 to 20% chance. And we'll let you know if anything happens on that. That's going to diminish as the day goes on. But yes, let's get to the adventure cast. As you can see this morning, it is going to be 77 degrees, but look by noon, we're at 92 degrees already. And then yes, triple digit temperatures 101 by 6 p.m. I'll talk about if that keeps up and spoiler alert, it's going to. All right, thank you, Luke. 601 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, everything is running smoothly on both our main roads and secondary roads. We do have some traffic alerts to bring you in just a moment. But when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And a reminder, as you're heading out the door this morning, drivers on I-84 out in Caldwell expect ramp closures and traffic changes for the next six weeks. Now the eastbound off-ramp and the westbound on-ramp at Franklin will be closed. Detours will take drivers down 21st Avenue to Blaine Street, then over to the 10th Avenue interchange. Linden Street will also be closed under I-84. Crews are finishing up construction. Now as Idaho grows, of course, the need for expanded roadways does, as this is Idaho's biggest project in the valley, widening out in Canyon County. Now, one month from today, Michael Vaughn will be missing for a full year. Now, Vaughn was just five years old when he disappeared from his Fruitland neighborhood on the evening of July 27th. This past week, the community gathered to celebrate his sixth birthday and to raise awareness about the ongoing search. Now, anyone with information is asked to call Fruitland or call cops 343 cops or email fruitland.org. You're looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Supreme Court's latest decision to overturn Roe v. Wade is causing waves across the country. Coast to coast, protesters, they rallied over the weekend for and against the Supreme Court's decision. At least 13 states, including Idaho, have Texas-style tr trigger laws that locked new abortion restrictions into place following Roe v. Wade being overturned. Now, that law was signed by Idaho Governor Brad Little. It'll go into effect later this summer. Another 13 states are likely to restrict access or enact bans soon. Women are not second class citizens and the government is not the one that will decide about the continuation of a pregnancy. You know, there's no equivalent there for men. What the Supreme Court said was that the Constitution does not give a woman the right to have an abortion. Here in the Gem States, protesters also made their way to the state capitol following the Supreme Court decision. Crowds marched from Boise City Hall to the Idaho Capitol to make their voices heard. Now, most of the people were in support of abortion rights. Some counter protesters were there. Both sides remained peaceful. A larger protest followed on Saturday, bringing thousands to the steps of the Idaho Capitol. Meantime, several Idaho Republican leaders are praising the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, stating that it will allow them to protect unborn lives. Now, Governor Brad Little released a statement saying in part, quote, 
The right to an abortion was a judicial creation. Abortion is not a right expressed in the U.S. Constitution, and abortion will be entrusted to the states and their people to regulate, end quote. In the meantime, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean released this statement. It reads in part, quote, the decision to terminate a pregnancy is a deeply personal and private one. This decision by the Supreme Court will have devastating consequences on the health, privacy, and economic independence of women throughout our community, state, and nation. To read the full statement, as well as statements from other Idaho leaders, you can head on over to IdahoNews.com. And there still are a handful of decisions we expect from the U.S. Supreme Court this week. Now, one of those has to do with the controversial immigration policy enacted by former President Trump that President Biden has now sought to undo, though he has been met with some resistance from courts. Now, national correspondent Christine Frizzau brings us up to speed on what the case is looking like and it's what it's known as the remain in Mexico policy. The central question in the case Biden v. Texas, whether the Biden administration must continue to enforce the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. Do you believe that the remain in Mexico policy instituted by the Trump administration is cruel? Uh, as it was implemented, I do. Twice, President Biden has tried to end the policy, also called migrant protection protocols, which requires those seeking asylum to wait for their cases to play out in Mexico or else be detained here. But he was sued by the states of Missouri and Texas. It's pretty important that that be enforced and that people be required by law, which they are, to remain in their country of origin before their hearing. The reality, the majority of those seeking asylum are allowed to now wait in this country with only enough detention beds for about 30 to 40,000 people. Just last month, more than 239,000 people were encountered at the border. The head of one sector in Texas tweeting Friday his team seized 46 pounds of cocaine, encountered more than 1,300 migrants, including three sex offenders and a member of MS-13. Some border officials sounding alarm bells following shocking new numbers from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, reporting it's already arrested 50 people on the terror watch list between ports of entry, a massive jump from previous years, 15 in 2021, and single digits in recent years before that. Why are they coming? Because our borders are insecure and, and they're wide open. Mark Morgan used to head U.S. Customs and Border Protection under President Trump. Who's getting away? We call those gotaways. Those, those that have broken in our southwest border and evaded apprehension. Right now under this administration, 800,000 have gotten away. My concern is the next terrorist attack could already be here. Unlike last week's rulings on a New York gun law and federal abortion law, the nine justices' questions in this case were far less revealing regarding which way they may rule. In the past, they've deferred to the executive branch to enforce immigration law. But we should know much more in a matter of hours or at least by the end of the week. I'm Christine Frizzau reporting. Back here in the Treasure Valley this morning, the Caldwell Fire Department mourning the sudden death of one of their own. Deputy Chief Brad Johnson Trosky had a medical emergency while at home this weekend. Despite the best efforts of first responders and doctors at West Valley Medical Center, he did pass away. Now, Johnson was an accomplished trainer. He worked with both veterans and new recruits in the department and was known throughout the gem state. Well, switching gears this morning, float season starts today out on the Boise River. Ada County Parks and Waterways, they do suggest that you leave your car at Ann Morrison Park, where your float will end, and take the shuttle bus to Barber Park, where your float will begin. Now, Barber Park, there you can rent all the equipment you'll need for an enjoyable and cooling float down the Boise River. Yeah, nice cool off sounds good when it comes to our temperatures for today. Stepping out the door this morning, very mild. But yeah, first triple digits of the season are expected for your Monday. I know not a lot of people are looking forward to it. So let's take a look at the headlines. What is in store for us this week? Well, today, especially dangerously hot weather. It's going to continue tomorrow and the rest of the week. But today is probably going to be the hottest day and it's going to be dry all week long too. That's because of that southern flow of that dry, hot, hot air. We do get some relief midweek. Wednesday and Thursday will be cooler than the rest of this week, but it's still going to be so incredibly warm. Now look, as you can see, 102 in Boise, 103 in Emmett, 103 in Caldwell, 96 in Idaho City, 89 in McCall. Not even that cold in the mountains. It's still very hot. 104, your hottest temperature, as you can see there 
in Ontario. Well, what is causing all of this? We, we can see right here, satellite and radar, some storms moving through just in eastern Oregon. But you take a look at the greater picture. There hasn't been a lot of weather activity here. But out here, a storm is developing. Maybe that can help us out in a week or so, but still a week till then. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, this ridge of high pressure giving all, delivering all that warm, hot air. That's what's been right here, and it's moving all the way along. And you can see we're still basically in the warm, warm zone. And these low pressure systems, they're missing us. They're going up into Canada. Our only real hope for the next week or so is actually in this low pressure system that's developing Saturday and hopefully Sunday, Monday, Monday, we might finally get some rain or at least some cooler weather to relieve us from all this heat. All right, thank you, Luke. 610 on your Monday, CBS 2 News and News Talk KBY. We bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there on the roads from the News Talk Traffic Center with Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, good morning. Good morning. Well, we're doing okay. Uh, I-84 moving right along. Of course, that uh, ramp closure that we talked about in the uh, news story a little bit ago, the Franklin on-ramp from uh, Highway 2026 to I-84 eastbound shut down. You can't get onto the freeway there. Uh, we had an earlier wreck at uh, Karcher Road just west of Middleton Road. An injury crash. Looks like that's out of the way now. There was some delay at one point, but uh, moving fine through that area now in Nampa. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That's 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And straight ahead on CBS 2 News this morning, hearings continue today about the police response to the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. A look at some of the backlash. Plus, fireworks stands open for the 4th of July. The reminder from fire officials to stay safe. And it's one of our favorite times of the day. It's time for our question of the day. First, let's take a look at Friday's question. 48% of people say they have to have this when grilling out. The answer? watermelon guys it is good and you're definitely going to want to find a way to cool down for today now let's look at today's question 41 percent of people say this brings them joy and relaxes them okay folks what do we think it is All right, take a look at Ontario today, 103 degrees tonight, 66 degrees and 100 tomorrow. It is very, very hot there. Going into Eagle, it's still warm there. If you want to hit the bike park, it's going to be 103 today, 62 tomorrow and 99 tomorrow. So it's going to be very, very hot. And I believe Sarah Jacobson has breaking news. Yes, I do. Thank you so much, Luke. 615 on your Monday. We do begin with breaking news. There is an Amber Alert out of Nampa, Idaho. We do have reports that two children, a one year old and an 11 month year old, have been taken by a 20 year old female. She is driving a 2003 blue Honda Pilot with stolen or no plates. Again, this is breaking news into the CBS studios this morning. We do have an Amber Alert coming in out of Nampa, Idaho. Again, two children taken, one an one year old, one an 11 month old by a 20 year old woman. Again, in a 2003 blue Honda Pilot with stolen or no plates. Again, keep your eye out for that vehicle. We hope to have more information for you in the coming minutes. Now we begin out of Texas, where hearings into the police response to the Uvalde school shooting. They do resume today. Over the weekend, the final funeral was held for the 21st victim who was shot and killed. Now, 10 year old Luisa Garcia was remembered for his contagious laugh and for his love of trampolines. Now, a mom in Uvalde, Texas, did manage to get her kids out of the school during last month's shooting, despite efforts from police to keep her out. Now, Chelsea Torres shares her story and why she says she still is getting pushback from police. They take me out the cop. I see his arm, like, just give me a little gateway. Cause I'm a little, so a little gateway where I could just run. Without a doubt in her mind, Angelina Gomez knew she would have to save her children herself. She jumped a fence, began banging on a nearby door where her oldest son's teacher saw her. I'm like, you already have a gateway out, so just might as well come out. Like, if I'm going to run out with him, y'all just come on too. Gomez safely gets her oldest son and some of his classmates out. 
then goes back for her youngest son, running around the school, desperately searching for his classroom. At this moment, I'm jiggling the handle and I'm going pretty nuts, like trying to get the door open and it's not going to open. So I stand back and the cops are already on me and they're like, ma'am, calm down. Like she tells them to evacuate the school or she won't move. Immediately, they start evacuating that classroom and my son runs out to me. He's like, mom, mom. Just remember when my son saw my other son, he hu one hugged the other one and said, I'm so glad you're okay. And the other one said, I was so worried that you weren't. So it was a big thing because in that moment, I was like, they're really happy to see each other. They thought that they're each other, that they're alive. Since May 24th, Gomez claims she's been faced with scrutiny from law enforcement at her own home. The other night, we were exercising and we had a cop parked at the corner flickering us with his headlights. Due to incidents like this, Gomez said she is separated from her boys. Just so my sons don't feel like they have to watch cops passing by, stopping, parking. She has been protesting along with other community members in Uvalde Town Square, asking for UCISD Police Chief Pete Arredondo to be fired. Her goal now is to file a lawsuit. The fact that he wasn't fired immediately based upon whatever it is, hours of video from testimony such as from Angeli is an indication that there is some sort of a, what, corruption? Well, switching gears and looking ahead to the 4th of July weekend from Boise Fire, a reminder to be safe with fireworks. Now you've seen fireworks stands now open. If you do buy, just remember work. Fireworks are not allowed in our foothills or open grasslands. We do have a link to a map showing you those precise areas. You can find that on IdahoNews.com. Yeah, looking forward to 4th of July. I think myself, I'll be out there at Ann Morrison Park. I like to leave my fireworks to the professionals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always good to go out. And they usually do have better displays, just a lot longer, a lot more better fireworks. They find the good ones. I hate to say it. We do try to get good ones in my family. But normally, yeah, the professionals definitely do a much better job. Well, let's switch gears because, of course, today it is going to be toasty out there. First triple digit day of the year. Can't believe it's already here. Yeah, unfortunately, mm -hmm. it is a little bit milder right now as you can see in Boise about 66 degrees with a light breeze coming through. But as Sigra said, it is triple digits finally this time of year. Unfortunately, it's going to get so much warmer. We'll take you right now to the future cast. If you're just tuning in, you can see just some clouds moving over the Treasure Valley. It's still going to be mostly sunny all day long. There's a slight chance of a thunderstorm and rain, but not much. And that will decrease as the day goes on. But now you take a look at our extended forecast. As you can see here, this is the highlight 101 degrees on Monday, triple digits. And most of the Treasure Valley will have triple digits today. Some parts will have triple digits tomorrow in Boise, 96 degrees tomorrow, the projected high. Then finally, we get a little bit of midweek relief as it goes down to 86 on Wednesday, then up to 90 on Thursday, 93 on Friday. 96 on Saturday. We're nearly at 100 again, and then 92 on Sunday. Going up into the mountains, will you get some relief? A little bit, but still 89 on Monday, 83 on Tuesday. Some nice temperatures, 75 and 78 Wednesday, Thursday, 82 on Friday, 84 on Saturday, and then 80 on Sunday. If you want to keep up to date on all your weather, Roland has his forecast at 4, 5.30, 9 on the CW and 10 p.m. Tune in. Thank you, Luke. It is 620 on your Monday. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, looking like that sunshine starting to shine out there this morning on your Monday. Let's get a check of what's happening down there on the roads from News Talk KBOI's Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking? Looking good so far. We're doing okay. Light to uh, moderate volume I-84. We haven't had the uh, consistent slowdowns, the merge areas, uh, popular spots like 10 Mile Meridian Road quite yet. Going along well and uh, routes away from the freeways too overall. Decent shape. Still have that closure in place of Amity. That is that uh, stretch in Meridian. Amity closed just to the uh, west, or excuse me, east of Eagle Road between Eagle Road and Locust Grove. Still have that closure. From the News Talk KBOI traffic studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all 
our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News this morning, struggling with losing loved ones to coronavirus. The impact the virus still having on COVID survivors. And later, the I-84 expansion project may shake up your commute for a few weeks, where drivers will need to steer clear of. Be the first to know about breaking Idaho news and get help planning your day with the latest detailed weather forecast. Download the CBS2 mobile app today. Sponsored by Westmark Credit Union. This is CBS2 News this morning. 625 on your Monday. Welcome back with more than a million Americans now lost to coronavirus. Ripple effects of grief are spreading through the nation. As the toll rises, so do the number of bereaved family members. Elise Preston speaks with a New Yorker grappling with the devastating loss both at home and at work. For Eileen Jimenez, the past two years have brought heartbreak after heartbreak. They were like one after the other. You know what I mean? Like you don't even have a break to kind of grieve one before you're grieving the next. COVID-19 took two of her uncles and four of her close friends. I lost a very good college friend that I known for many years and I just couldn't believe it, right? She just had a baby like two years ago. The pandemic also left gaping holes in her work at Catholic Guardian Services, where she helps find permanent homes for children in foster care. Eight of the foster mothers she works with died of COVID, leaving behind the children in their care. My heart broke for them, and particularly one that was being adopted, and that was completely disrupted. More than a million Americans have now died of COVID-19. Research at Penn State University shows for each of those deaths, at least nine family members are left behind as survivors. Our results would imply that um, with over a million uh, individuals who died of COVID-19, that um, over 9 million people had lost um, a parent, uh, sibling, spouse, child, or grandparent in the U.S. Ashton Verdery helped to lead the study. I think that it's going to be 50 or 60 years before um, a large proportion of the population doesn't remember that their grandparent um, passed away in this uh, kind of, uh, you know, acute mortality shock that, that influenced the country. Ripples of grief that will change American families long after the pandemic loosens its grip. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. Still to come on CBS 2 News this morning. A sudden death at the Caldwell Fire Department has the community mourning, remembering Deputy Chief Brad Johnson Trosky. And a look at your question of the day. Again, you still have time to guess on our Facebook and Twitter. This morning. This morning on CBS 2 News, the SCOTUS decision on Roe v. Wade making waves over the weekend. A look at the response from across the country and here in Idaho. Plus, the Supreme Court expected to pass down more decisions this week. What to know regarding the controversial Remain in Mexico policy. And today marks the start to Idaho's float season. Some tips to keep things floating as smooth as possible. CBS 2 News This Morning starts now. Good morning, I'm Luke Randall. You take a look at Boise right now, 66 degrees with a light breeze. Feels quite good, but it's not going to feel that way in a few hours because it is going to get warm. You take a look at our future cast, you can see just some clouds moving over the Treasure Valley, but it's going to stay mostly sunny all day long. Now that warm up I was talking about, it is real. You take a look at our adventure cast and you can see it. 77 degrees by 9 a.m. this morning, then by noon, 90 too. That's our high for the most days that we've had previously, and it's going to get way hotter today with 101 degrees, the temperature by 6 p.m. That's our max for the day. It is going to be very warm today, and we'll have more on if that warm weather is going to stay in just a bit. Thank you, Luke. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. It is a sunny start to your Monday. Everything running smoothly. So when you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. 
Breaking news this morning out of Nampa. Two kids have been taken by a 20 year old female believed to be their babysitter. Now the two kids are a one year old and 11 months old. Nampa police again, they say the woman is their babysitter and they have reason to believe that they are in danger. Now police say they're traveling in a 2003 blue Honda Pilot with stolen or no plates. If you do see them, call 911. Now, one month from today, Michael Vaughn will be missing for a full year. Vaughn was just five years old when he disappeared from his Fruitland neighborhood on the evening of July 27th. This past week, the community gathered to celebrate his sixth birthday and to raise awareness about the ongoing search. Anyone with information about Michael is asked to email findmichael at fruitland.org or call 208-343-COPS. And you are looking live in Washington, D.C. this morning, where the Supreme Court's latest decision to overturn Roe v. Wade is causing waves across the country. Coast to coast, protesters rallied over the weekend for and against the Supreme Court's decision. At least 13 states, including Idaho, have Texas-style trigger laws that lock new abortion restrictions into place following the overturn of Roe v. Wade. That law was signed by Idaho Governor Brad Little and will go into effect later this summer. Now, another 13 states are likely to restrict access or enact bans soon. Women are not second-class citizens, and the government is not the one that will decide about the continuation of a pregnancy. You know, there's no equivalent there for men. What the Supreme Court said was that the Constitution does not give a woman the right to have an abortion. Protesters in Idaho also made their way to the state capitol following the Supreme Court decision. Crowds, they marched from Boise City Hall to Idaho to the capitol to make their voices heard about the Supreme Court decision. Now, most were in favor of abortion rights. Some counter protesters were also there. Both sides remained peaceful. A larger protest did follow on Saturday, bringing thousands to the steps of the Idaho capitol. And several Idaho Republican leaders praising the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, stating that it will allow them to protect unborn lives. Now, Governor Brad Little released a statement saying in part, quote, the right to an abortion was a judicial creation. Abortion is not a right expressed in the U.S. Constitution and abortion will be entrusted to states and their people to regulate, end quote. In the meantime, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean released this statement. It reads, quote, the decision to terminate a pregnancy is a deeply personal and private one. This decision by the Supreme Court will have devastating consequences on the health, privacy and economic independence of women throughout our community, state and nation. To read the full statement as well as statements from other Idaho leaders, you can head to IdahoNews.com. And there still are a handful of decisions we're expecting this week from the U.S. Supreme Court. One of those has to do with a controversial immigration policy started by President Trump that President Biden has sought to undo, though he has been met with some resistance by higher courts. Now, National Correspondent Christine Frazau brings us up to speed on this case, looking at what's known as the Remain in Mexico policy. The central question in the case Biden v. Texas whether the Biden administration must continue to enforce the Trump era remain in Mexico policy. Do you believe that the remain in Mexico policy instituted by the Trump administration is cruel? Uh, as it was implemented, I do. Twice, President Biden has tried to end the policy, also called migrant protection protocols, which requires those seeking asylum to wait for their cases to play out in Mexico or else be detained here but he was sued by the states of Missouri and Texas. It's pretty important that that be enforced and that people be required by law, which they are, to remain in their country of origin before their hearing. The reality, the majority of those seeking asylum are allowed to now wait in this country with only enough detention beds for about 30 to 40,000 people. Just last month, more than 239,000 people were encountered at the border. The head of one sector in Texas tweeting Friday his team seized 46 pounds of cocaine, encountered more than 1,300 migrants, including three sex offenders and a member of MS-13. Some border officials sounding alarm bells following shocking new numbers from U.S. Customs and Border Protection, reporting it's already arrested 50 people on the terror watch list between ports of entry, a massive jump from previous years. 15 in 2021, and single digits in recent years before that. 
Why are they coming? Because our borders are insecure and, and they're wide open. Mark Morgan used to head U.S. Customs and Border Protection under President Trump. Who's getting away? We call those gotaways. Those, those that have broken in our southwest border and evaded apprehension. Right now under this administration, 800,000 have gotten away. My concern is the next terrorist attack could already be here. Unlike last week's rulings on a New York gun law and federal abortion law, the nine justices' questions in this case were far less revealing regarding which way they may rule. In the past, they've deferred to the executive branch to enforce immigration law. But we should know much more in a matter of hours or at least by the end of the week. I'm Christine Frizzau reporting. Back here in the Treasure Valley, the Caldwell Fire Department, they're mourning the sudden death of one of their own. Now, Deputy Chief Brad Johnson Trosky had a medical emergency while at his home this weekend. Despite the best efforts of first responders and doctors at West Valley Medical Center, he did pass away. Now, Johnson was an accomplished trainer. He worked with both veterans and new recruits in the department. He was known throughout the gem state. Well, switching gears happening today, float season begins on the Boise River, Ada County Parks and Waterway. They do suggest that you leave your car at Ann Morrison Park where your float will end and take the shuttle bus to Barber Park where your float will begin. Now at Barber Park, you can always rent all the equipment you'll need for an enjoyable and cooling float down the Boise River. Lots of fun, actually. Um, that Also, that bus, too, that they're recommending you take. It's actually not half bad. Just a couple bucks to be able to get up to, well, I guess, up to Barber Park and then get back down to your car. You float on down. And yeah. then get in your car, ready to go. <laughs> it's a great day. And I know it's going to be a hot day out there. So if you're not hitting the water, you want to make sure your air conditioning is bumping. Lots of water. Yeah, just the full list of things Especially, you need to prepare. Especially, it is going to be so, so dry and so mm -hmm. hot this weekend. That's the main point of my headlines this week. As you can see, it is going to be dangerously hot today, especially, I don't know if you uh, listened in the previous week, but the, there were those hikers in Arizona that got stuck because they didn't have enough water and just because they didn't, uh, they underestimated just how hot it was. It's that case here in Boise today, especially with just how warm it is. That dry weather is going to remain all week long and it's going to be hot all week long. We do get a little bit of relief midweek. It's going to get a little bit cooler on Wednesday, but still so, so warm. As you can see right here, 104 in Ontario, 102 in Boise today, 101 in Mountain Home, and even the in the mountains, 89 in McCall. What's causing all this? Well, you see, not a lot of storm activity, but there is a wave of high pressure that you can't quite see on this. But as you can see, this storm over here, it hasn't really, the storms haven't been developing and we haven't been getting relief that we are used to, that we've had the last few weeks. This ridge of high pressure here, it's delivering that hot air and it moves right through Boise and Idaho. That's what's causing everything to be so warm. And these low pressure systems, there's one way back there and there's one here. They're moving into Canada, so they're missing us. They're not giving us the storms or the cool air that we're used to. And because of that, that's just why we're going to remain so hot. So hopefully within the next few days or by uh, next Monday, actually, we might have this low pressure system develop over here and finally, finally cool us off, give us rain or something different. Thank you, Luke. Yeah, sign is summer is officially here with those triple digits. Live look outside CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Let's get a check of what's happening out there from the News Talk Traffic Center with the one and only Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, good morning. Hi, Sarah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Getting out the door. Yeah, sun glare to deal with and volume has uh, increased a little bit. Nothing out of the norm, though. We're starting to see a little bit of crowded traffic. At uh, 10 Mile, for example, the Merge Point, Meridian Road, all very standard. No long delays. Uh, don't forget the uh, on-ramp, though, from the Franklin Road, 29 interchange there in Caldwell off Highway 2026 to eastbound I-84. You cannot get onto the freeway there. That ramp shut down for the next six weeks for construction. One of the uh, latest closures. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all your team traffic updates. And of course, don't forget about our question of the day. That question is 41% of people say this brings them joy and relaxes them. Okay, now I'm thinking more about the beach. I don't know what about it. It's probably because it's going to be hot today, those triple-digit temperatures. Nothing relaxes me more than floating the Boise River. Yeah, a good beach vacation <laughs> or a vacation in the water, water park, something like that. 
Mm. Yeah, lots of fun. Uh, definitely, I use my Calm app every single day. Ethan says playing video games. Yeah, good way to kind yeah, of help. That's fun. A little Especially bit of Especially Wii games, like just playing like Wii Sports, something simple like that where you can goof around. Yeah, get your body moving a little too. Thomas says coffee. Yeah, the one thing I need to get my body moving in the morning. Definitely feeling more relaxed. I'm thinking pets. I forget who it was, but... They had a good one. I can only speak for myself, but a nap, that's so true. Gail, I agree with you. Nothing better than a nap. That's what I always say. You know, if you're feeling kind of cranky, don't like life, just take a little nap. It'll solve everything. All right. Well, you still have about 15 minutes to guess, both on our Facebook page or Twitter, and we'll continue to read some of the guesses and reveal the answer at the end of the show, right before CBS This Morning. And still to come on CBS 2 News, Russia continuing its assault on Ukraine, where they're suddenly striking that's catching the country off guard. Well, if you're trying to get to the mountains to escape the heat, it's still going to be quite warm. Sun Valley, 85 degrees, your high today, 54 your low, and then 84 tomorrow. And then in Cascade, it's going to be hot. 90 degrees today, 53 in the evening, and 88 tomorrow. Sarah Jacobson has more on the breaking situation in Nampa. Thank you, Luke. Breaking news this morning out of Nampa. Two kids have been taken by a 20-year-old female. The two kids are a 1-year-old and an 11-month-old. Now, Nampa police say the woman is their babysitter, and they do have reason to believe that they're in danger. Now, police say they're traveling in a 2003 blue Honda Pilot with stolen or no license plates. Again, that's a 2003 blue Honda Pilot with stolen or no license plates. If you do see them, immediately call 911. And we are turning now to Russia and its intensifying attacks on Ukraine with renewed bombing of the capital city of Kyiv. Now, Russia's ministry says that dozens of missiles are being fired at targets this morning. Now, Raby Inconsonito reports from the capital. For the first time in nearly three weeks, Russian missiles hit the capital, Kyiv. One person was killed and at least six injured, including this seven-year-old girl pulled from the rubble. Thankfully alive, her father tragically was not. That missile hit the roof of their apartment complex, but it's actually not the first time that it's been hit. The last time was about two months ago. Now, one possibility is that Russian forces are targeting a Soviet-era arms factory. That's literally this one across the street. It's maybe symbolic, yeah, symbolic aggression. Uh, Kyiv Mayor Vitaly Klitschko said it's maybe a symbolic attack ahead of NATO's summit in Madrid this week, where the war in Ukraine is set to dominate the agenda. But Russian targets were also hit today, shattered military trucks and other equipment on fire. These are believed to be the first targets destroyed by U.S.-supplied guided rocket systems that arrived in Ukraine just days ago. Too late to save the eastern city of Severodonetsk. Ukrainian troops there have been ordered to retreat. Russian forces are now trying to take its sister city of Lizitansk. And if that city falls, and it is expected to, then that would mean the entire region of Luhansk will have fallen to Russian forces. That would be a territorial loss and a hit to morale for Ukraine. But President Vladimir Zelensky says that every city that's been taken will be won back. Ramy Innocencio, CBS News, Kyiv. Russia's renewed attacks coincides with a three-day summit in the Bavarian Alps. Now, President Joe Biden and Western allies are focused on keeping economic fallout from the war in Ukraine from fracturing the global coalition working to punish Russia's aggression. Now, Britain's Boris Johnson warned the leaders not to give in to fatigue, even as Russia lobbed new missiles at Kyiv. And we do know it's a tough time for families here in Idaho. There is an opportunity for you to help hungry Idahoans in need this week. Now, CBS's Summer Food Drive, it's this Wednesday, the 29th, right here at CBS 2 News out on 16th Street in downtown Boise. Now, the donations will go to the Idaho Food Bank. You can drop off donations anytime from 5 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Yeah, luckily temperatures will cool slightly because today, if you haven't heard yet, triple digit temperatures. Not only that, the opening, of course, float season out on the Boise River. So if you're not cooling off with the water, you want to be cooling off in front of the air conditioning, the mangle, just cool off today. <laughs> that is quite a perfect time for float season to start just because of how hot it is. You take a look at Boise right now, you can see 66 degrees. The sun has come up and it is about to get so much 
hotter. If you're just joining in, you can see our high-risk future cast. Just some clouds coming over the Treasure Valley. There's a very slight chance of thunderstorms within the 5 to 10% chance region, and there honestly is not likely a chance of all of that happening. You can see some clouds in, but it's going to be mostly sunny today. Now, the important part, our week, and as you can see, it is going to be hot. I'm going to move out the way just to show you how hot it is because that's the focus. 101 today in the Treasure Valley, 96 tomorrow. Then that midweek relief I was talking about, it's not much, but it's something. 86 and 90 Wednesday and Thursday. Then you can look at Friday, 93 degrees, warming up again Saturday, 96, and Sunday, 92. It's not really even getting cool that week. As you can see, most of the lows are mid 60s to high 50s. Going up into the mountains, does it get colder? Obviously a little bit, but not that much. 89 on Monday, 83 on Tuesday, and the most bearable days, Wednesday and Thursday, with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. Then Friday, as you can see, 82 degrees, Saturday 84, and Sunday 80. It's going to be a dry week out there. Take care of yourself. As Sarah said, check your AC because it is going to be brutal this week. Go to the mountains, do float season. Anything like that can help. Now, if you want to stay up to date on your weather, Roland has his forecast today at 4, 5.30, and 10 o'clock, and 9 o'clock on the CW. No, thank you, Luke. Yeah, find the way to cool on down no matter how it is. And a note to always check on your neighbors to make sure they're staying cool. CBS 2 News and News Talk KBOI bring you team traffic all morning long. Yeah, let's take a look out there this morning and get a check of what's happening from the Newstalk Traffic Center's Ron O'Brien. Hey, Ron, how's it looking out there? We've had a little volume increase at times. 84 merge slowdowns, not real solid. No long delays, say 10 mile Meridian Road. That can uh, fluctuate. That's been about it. Dealing with some sun glare, careful. The ramp from the Franklin 29 interchange to 84 eastbound closed as of yesterday. No getting onto the freeway eastbound there off of Highway 2026 for about the next six weeks. Starting to see traffic build on Highway 2026 eastbound at Middleton Road now, stacking up when the light's red for about a mile. From the News Talk KBOI Traffic Studio, I'm Ronald Bryan. Thank you, Ron. When you do get in the car, make sure you turn on News Talk KBOI. That is 670 AM or 93.1 FM for all our team traffic updates. And still to come on CBS 2 News, summer travel heating up. Why the demand to get away is getting tough to keep up with despite those higher price tags. This is CBS 2 News this morning. 654 on your Monday. Welcome back. Investors are hoping markets will remain in recovery mode today. The S&P gained more than 6% last week. The Dow rose more than 5%. Now this is a good sign compared to earlier this month where a big market sell-off brought the S&P into bear market territory. Wall Street hoping the Fed might slow down its interest rate hikes aimed at reducing inflation. Well, national sky high gas prices have eased just a bit this morning. A gallon of regular sitting at 490. Still, pump prices are the highest right here in the West. CBS's Daniel Backus is in Los Angeles with a holiday rush already underway. Travelers are crowding airports and packing planes. 2.4 million passengers went through TSA checkpoints Friday. That's the highest number in a single day since the start of the pandemic. There were a lot more travelers at 4.30 in the morning than I expected. The stress is expected to get worse this 4th of July weekend. Airlines are short employees in and out of the cockpit. Pilots flying for United have a tentative deal for a 15% raise. But the cost of a getaway for the rest of us is soaring. Tickets to fly are 14% higher this year. Was it more expensive than usual to Absolutely. get to LA? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I have never, and I have traveled for years and years and years, I have never seen prices like this. Looking to sleep? A hotel will cost 23% more. If there's a rental car available, expect to pay about $40 a day more than 2019. After Yellowstone's historic flooding, the park's partially reopened roads had visitors waiting in traffic to witness iconic scenes like this, a bison roaming in front of tourists as Old Faithful erupts. No luck to visitors at Glacier National Park. The scenic going to the Sun Road usually reopens July 4th, but snow will keep it closed. 
holiday traffic is expected to be the worst this Thursday and Friday between noon and 9 p.m. So if you want to avoid the gridlock, experts say make sure you leave early in the morning. Donya Backus, CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, here in the Gem State, gas prices, they remain high this morning. AAA reporting our average sitting at about 5.20 a gallon. According to Gas Buddy, the cheapest place to fill up still going to be either Costco or Walmart. It lists several locations, all sitting at 5.09 a gallon. Try to save that buck where you can. All right, now it's time for our question of the day. The question, 41% of people say that this not only brings them joy, but also relaxes them. All right, the answer. You weren't too far off. The smell of rain. Oh, the best smell. Well, maybe not the smell we'll get today. Make sure you stay <laughs> cool out there today, guys. It's going to be a hot one. We'll see you back here at 11 a.m. Take the news with you on the radio. News Talk KBOI. And for news and information 24 hours a day, click on IdahoNews.com.